So one other thing that happens with high-end players, big goalies like you, what are you, 6'2", 6'3"? 6'3", yes, yeah. All right. They're not going to be beating pucks into big goalies, and, they, and they're going to be very good at puck adjustment. And Maddie and I, we're not big guys, but they got sticks that are 18 feet long. They can take a puck from here, puck adjust over to there, and then do something with it. So they can move that puck laterally seven, eight feet and be shooting at half empty nets. I've always told people, as accurate as NHL guys are, they're even more accurate at shooting at half empty nets with puck adjustment. So with this drill, Maddie's gonna square up to you with a closed or an open stick like this, and he's gonna pull it quickly to here and try to beat it around you. And this is the perfect time when you slide over where you're gonna do a, a blocker projection to push over it, but we're not gonna go too high. So if you take a line from the puck to the top of the pad, you wanna bring that blocker right down on that line so we're not up where we create a hole, and as Mitch Corrin would say, nothing through you, nothing underneath you. <laughs> and also, you don't want to be going down too low because you've already got that covered with the pad. You want to imagine the line from the puck to the top of your pad and run your blocker over that. Same thing on the opposite side. If he's got it past your midline, we don't want to have our glove back here like a lot of goalies do in their hips because we're not covering as much aerial angle. So if we got a puck there, same thing. We want to run that glove straight down so we're jamming that up so we're going to just go exclusively to the blocker side and i want you to pull it maddie as quick as you can with a nice square stick and you're going to elevate it from somewhere in here and he's going to try to jam you up go nice excellent excellent look at that look at that dustin love it love it beautiful beautiful textbook textbook Three more, three more. That a boy, Dustin. That a boy. That a boy. Last one, last one. Outstanding. And that's a good teachable point there because one thing we got to be careful of is when we do projection, we don't want to over pursue with our gloves. It's like we don't over pursue with our position. And ultimately, if you think about all the goals that go in, if we always force the guy to go outside the perimeter of your body, you're gonna make them be good instead of lucky. Because most people aren't going, hey, you know what, Dusty, I'm gonna to try to go armpit on you. They're not aiming their goal. So when we pursue with the glove, we gotta pursue on that same line, but also horizontally, so we're not pursuing out, creating that six hole. Same thing on this side. He's gonna show a good backhand square stick. He's pulling to here. We're getting a good slide and projecting the glove without elevating too high, creating that gap. That's it. Nice. Three more. Now hang on for one second. One thing that happened on that one, you had good slide, good mechanics here, but we left our stick here and we vacated the five hole. Now he's likely gonna be pretty tough. He's so far along to get it back to the five hole, but turn that right shoulder, get the upper body pivot, and that's gonna help close up holes. Three more. Stick still a little slow there. Two more. Ah, stick was perfect there, Dustin. Last one. Perfect, kid. Ah, that's good. Take a breather. Take a breather. You're going to do a violent knee drive, and I'm going to be out in front of you steering you. And I'm going to steer you in one of four directions. So I'm watching you, and as soon as your knees hit the ice, I'm going to send you like this for a push over and a push back. So push over, push back, and back, back, up again. Or I'll send you this way across the top of the crease, push over, push back, with good controlled gloves. Or I might go like this. And in that case, it's a fuller pivot back to the post in the RVH, and then back. So it's going to be like a push and return. The only question is going to be, is it left or right, or is it back to the post? Hard knees. Out of boy. All right. Two more, two more, two more. Finish it, finish it. Last one. Good job, Dusty. Way to work, man. Good job, good job. All right, we're going to get some warm-up pucks flying here. And I'm just going to get you right ass deep on the goal line. Maddie's going to bring the pucks in about 10 feet. And I want to see some 80 percenters up to his glove. Let's just watch the puck all the way in. Palm it or in the pocket so it stays in there. And snap the head sideways, watch it all the way in. Let's get the glove feeling the puck. These aren't heaters. These are just warm-ups. Right back on the goal line. And just a little 80 percenters to the glove. Don't hit. Starting in your butterfly. There we go. Ah, 
That's it. Good follow. Nice. Solid. Solid. Four more. Four more. Out of boy. Three more. Two more. Last one. All right. One thing I love, Dustin, and, and you do a great job at that, is look at the grouping of pucks. Completely controlled, no dirty diapers laying around. And drop back in your butterfly again for a second here. And to all the goalies watching, whether you play adult or whether you play youth hockey or high level, he's making that catch out here. He's not making that catch back here, and he's being very precise about getting it in the pocket, not letting it hit the palm. And you notice there's a lot of precision in that. So let's consider the, the same drill as a warm-up. We're gonna do the same thing to the blocker side now and we don't have to put a lot of impact into the puck. Let the speed of the puck do the work. And one thing I'd be careful at is if we're getting that blade off the ice, if it ever gets redirected, it can come back. You can still get good blocker involved by keeping the heel somewhere near the ice. So let's go the same drill to the blocker. Let's get the blocker warmed up. Nice, good follow, good head turn, awesome. Three more. Two more. Last one. All right. That's some great teachable stuff there for goalies of all levels because that's, when you play at the pro level and you practice with NHL guys, you know the importance of being precise. Oh, yeah. If it's off you, it's in the net before it even gets to the ice. And it's good practice habits to have no matter what you're playing. So now we're going to do a little midline rebound control. We're going to manage pucks off your jersey no matter where they hit. And we're going to do a little lead-up movement. What we're going to do, sliding butterfly, return back in a low stance, but up on your feet. He's going to put a nice heater on your midline, jaw carry, whatever. Gut trap, and maybe active glove like a kipper soft. Or you might even have to do a slight angle shift gut trap. But the key is, let's keep it up on your jersey. So it's going to be slide over, slide back, and you're going to get a gut trap. Okay? And then he's going to put it into you. Bring the pucks in there. Nice 80, 90 percent, or right into his gut when he returns, okay? But Dustin, for this variation, slide over, but T push back. So get up. When he's this far out and he's got aerial angle, recover to your feet, but a really low stance. Push over, push back. That's it. Way to seal it in there. Excellent job, Dustin. Excellent. Excellent. Push over, push back. Nice. Way to collapse on it. Let's go alternating sides. Let's do both sides. Nice, nice. Excellent job, Dustin. I love it, I love it. Out of boy, out of boy. Two more, two more. Last one, last one. Awesome. Let's bring the pucks in a little bit tighter here, Maddie. And one thing I think you know, we'll speak of when we talk afterwards. The biggest difference I find with NHL goalies having played there and coached goalies at that level is they don't do stuff amazingly awesome. They just do the basic stuff repetitively, consistent. And you've had a chance to skate with Pekka and Saros. What do you think you notice most? If I said, what's the biggest thing you notice about those two guys, besides their obvious height? There's two Saroses <laughs> and one Pekka. Well, I mean, they read the puck so well off the stick. The puck isn't even halfway to them. They've already got their save selection figured out. Right. And they, they, they're so good at, at understanding what the shooter sees and the tendencies of where they're likely yeah. going based on the situation. And it's not a guess. I think a lot of people get confused. They think, you know, at that speed of shot, you must be guessing. No, they've, they've smelled what the rock's cooking. They've seen oh, the yeah. release. They know their own personnel, too, which is another thing. And a guy like, you know, not Shea Weber anymore because he's not there, but they would know where he likes to go in practice. So, continuing on, the next upgrade on this drill is we're going to start down and stay down. It's the same exact drill. You're starting down, you push over, you push back, gut trap. Push over, push back, gut trap. So we're doing the same drill without recovering. Gotcha. So same thing, put it into his gut when he comes back. Here we go, start down, stay down. Yeah, stay down. Pivot this way, this side now. Push and push. Nice, way to accept it, way to collapse, way to push your head down over it. Love it. Good cover hunger, good cover hunger. Four more. Two more. All right, last one, last one. Obviously in the NHL, 
they're great talents. But I think the one thing we were chatting a little bit on the ice is, yeah, they're great, but they're very consistent at fundamental stuff. Like they do the basic stuff repetitively at a pretty high level. But you're not going through every practice at your level, I'm sure, where they're just filling the net on you because you can't stop them. You can stop NHL guys. What did you find about the, the difference in level? And what was your takeaway watching from the puck's view, what you see from the NHL guys all the time? Well, just even watching a practice on the other side of the glass as a spectator, you, you can see these guys have a ton of skill. But it's not until you jump on the ice with them you can really appreciate like how skilled these guys actually are, the amount of talent they have. But the other thing that I didn't really notice until skating with them was the amount of hard work they put in on the ice and off the ice. It's, it's incredible. And having done that journey myself, I always tell the funny story about kicking the living crap out of myself my year before I went to my first NHL camp. Like, I literally couldn't kick my butt any harder. I get to training camp, I'm the bottom five percentile. And that's the other thing to take away for the young athletes that are watching this video is, you think you're working hard, but not only do those people work harder than you, they work much harder, and that's a controllable. And, and when you see it up close, you can actually feel it, taste it, you see it that close, it definitely makes an impact. Now, who's the toughest guy in your time with the Predators to stop? Who's the guy that just owns your act? Who is that guy? You know, I've, I've had moments with a lot of different guys. I think right now Forsberg has my number. He, he's so deceptive. He'll do a last-minute flick here, a quick move there. Um, you know, when Duchesne first started skating with us, um, I had some problems with him at first. And um, How did you adapt? Like, that's a great point because... You know, somebody playing in the beer league, a rocket shows up and he starts filling the net. You can fall and feel sorry for yourself and oh, I'll never stop the guy. But there's an adjustment that happens. How did you adjust and how long did it take you to adjust to see their sort of book of sticks and tricks and stuff they do? How long did it take you to adapt to those guys to actually start getting their number a little bit? Well, it, it takes a little bit to see kind of what they got going on. But after you see them a couple times and kind of step back, and instead of beating yourself up or, you know, you can't expect to stop every shot so you know you let a couple in you stop a couple you kind of win a couple battles you start gaining momentum and and then you start kind of getting in a groove so that's the forwards perspective them shooting on you and you just went to goalie university you're with the the top of the heap in the nhl height wise and the smallest goalie in the nhl give or take so you had a unique time to watch those guys up close what's your takeaway from watching an nhl guy from 10 feet away on the ice sharing it with them well, that's, that's another thing, watching goalies as a spectator versus seeing them up front and personal. Guys like you see, he's so good with his skates, his feet, his, he's in so much control of his body and moving around. And Pekka's compete, he's all over the place. He's huge, but he's also fast, and you know, he can see a puck with the best of them. Now, obviously, you don't walk up to UC and say, you know, you're short. Your bit. Like, how has that topic, has it ever been addressed? Or like, the, how do you notice him playing at the highest level in the world at his size and proving all these people wrong? Because smaller goalies can make it if you've got this amazing athleticism. Has that ever been brought up when you talk, like the guys mention it? Like, has it come up at all? It's, it's never brought up at all. I mean, right. I've never heard any of the guys talk about it. I've never heard, you know, him talk about it. You know, anytime him and I chat, it's usually about gear or, you know, how bagged we are or, you know, casual conversation. But uh, I don't think height has ever been anything brought up in conversation. So, you know, he, he deals with it. Right. And I think the one takeaway for all those athletes out there that if you're not going to be big, you can still make it by doing the things he does. He's a battler. He's a competitor. He manages his depth. He doesn't let his height be a weakness. Now, he's overcome a lot of scouts that don't believe in that stuff by being awesome consistently. And from a technical point of view versus Pekka and UC, do they do anything different that you see technically different or are they mostly they're very similar? Well, they both work very hard on the fundamentals like most other NHL goalies. UC focuses more on control and, you know, like you said, managing depth. But he also reads the puck very well. I mean, he's so calm, when the puck comes off a stick, he already knows what he's doing before the puck even gets to him. Pekka's a lot of the same. He has a bit more fight and I wouldn't say less control, 
but he's more dynamic. Like he's definitely more, more he's moving around more. And that's interesting because you'd think it would be the opposite. Bigger guy with less of the box to fill would probably have to do less. Whereas the smaller guy may have to be doing a lot more running around just to fill that box as it jumps around the ice. So that's a very interesting observation. And I think that brings up a great point. I know for a fact that you've learned a lot by just watching those guys. And if you had to distill it down to what are the three things that you took away from watching those NHL goalies, not as a spectator, but from a peer, what are the three things you've taken away from watching NHL goalies up close? The biggest one is, is the hard work. You know, they, they are so dedicated and they work for every, you know, minute of ice that they get. So they got the hard work. I mean, reading the puck, like I said, I, I wish that I could read a puck as well as these guys do. Like I said, the puck's on the way to them and they already have their safe selection figured out. And I mean, control the, the fundamentals that they have. They, they are so structured and fundamentally sound. Right, I'll leave you with one last question. And it's, okay, how old are you now? 32. So you're 32. I take you back, Dustin, you're eight years old. Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently if you had the opportunities that you have now? What would you do differently knowing what you know now moving forward? I think I, think I would try to focus more on the fundamentals. You know, growing up, I didn't have that goalie coaching to really build a strong foundation. I think what I did do right was enjoy the game and have fun, which, which I think a lot of kids need to do. They need to be able to enjoy the game and love what they're doing. So building that passion, but also building a good, strong foundation. Mm -hmm.